Now ask me. Don't tell me. Our webcam model is someone who... I'm sorry, I don't know how to define it. Welcome to Generation Triple X, where privates are public and extreme is the norm. The sex industry has infiltrated the mainstream in the digital age. I asked three young girls about their lives as cam models. Of uh, people who are kind of otherized in day-to-day -day life, in the day-to-day -day world, they can act out certain parts of themselves online that they wouldn't necessarily be able to act out, like, you know, if you're not heterosexual, if you're not cis-sex, if you're not anything like that. You can find kind of a shelter online where you can be in a community acting a certain way that you might want to act in real life but you don't have the resources to. I don't think there's anything wrong with that anyway. I got into webcamming when I was in college and I put my all into it and I made it a business and I enjoy it. I always say that if you start webcamming and you hate it, it's not for you and you're not going to make any money. If you hate it, you won't excel um, because your attitude will show. Don't tip me if you don't like me, if I'm not the girl for you, if I'm not entertaining enough for you, if I'm not interesting enough for you, don't tip me. You know, go and talk to a different model. I'm absolutely fine with that. But when people talk to me for, you know, an hour, maybe even two hours, and they don't even tip once. These are normal girls trying to make a living, not porn stars. Students, mothers, daughters, sisters, but the relationships they have with clients can be dangerous and is very different to real life. I did have this one guy who, who kept telling me he loved me and he kept giving me loads and loads of money and he was giving me like hundreds of dollars like to do things, to buy cars and stuff like that and all he wanted was pictures just of me and he wanted me to just talk to him all the time and like, I mean, I was just playing a role, you know, I didn't have a serious relationship with him, but he did, like, you don't have real relationships with these clients, in my experience, anyway. I mean, there's one guy that, he's never ever spoken to me ever, but he's in my room all the time, and I always just, if someone wants a group show on MFC, um, like, three or more, and he always like requests a group show, but he's never spoken to me and it's just, it's just hard. Um, physically it can be really draining because you're just like having to, like, you know, physically like your vagina and vulva can get like exhausted. You can get overexerted and like it can be sore, you can get like bleeding and cuts and stuff like that. And emotionally it can also be exhausting because like, you know, people like can come on just to insult you in a public room and stuff like that or people can you know like stuff like 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 oh you're stupid whore like you fat slag you know all of this stuff and then that can be really like you know you know maybe at the time it doesn't affect you but afterwards it can or you are seen as an object and a service not a human being yeah there we go because it's really expensive stuff like i mean you know, I'd get like a hundred euro for 15 minutes, 10 minutes. Like, um, a lot of times the sites will take a cut out of it if you're doing it from on the site. I mean, I don't feel like the amount of physical like work that you would be doing to work in somewhere like McDonald's or, you know, to work in a deli um, and that I have done uh, vers and then like after tax and stuff like that, the amount of money I'd get versus the amount of work I do now on my own schedule, it's pretty, <laughs> you know, um, after all you realise that your labour is worth a lot more than maybe what you're being given. I got all into it when I was in college. I graduated, I have a Bachelor's of Science in Psychology, but I make triple what I would um, using that degree in the webcaming business. Granted, I'm sure overall I could build my way up and make that money, but I have a family to support or help support along with my husband. And it's just, I'm 29 years old, I'm not really, it's not something I want to do right now in my life, is to try to start a career when I've already made a business um, already 
for five years. Cam girling began with Jenny Cam in 1996, a conceptual artist broadcasting herself 24-7 on her blog, sometimes nude, sometimes eating, but mostly discussing her romantic relationships. But the monetizing of the web was really happening in 2003. It's no longer a business of selling internet access and modems and AOL subscriptions. There are startup businesses that are exclusively about web content and cam girls, they began here. The only thing would be uh, privacy or physical safety concerns from like I was talking about these people who like seem like they're coming like to get you kind of attitude. Um, I mean if someone like that came after me but I don't think that really I don't know how often that happens I don't think that happens very often it's complicated because there's a lot of implications with the idea of sex work and stuff and like as like as if it's like one big blanket term like yeah technically what I do is sex work I put a lot of sweat blood and tears into camming a lot of people have a misconception that you can just sign up on a website, log on, and you're going to make tons of money. No, sorry, I'm here to tell you it does not work that way. It's all a completely different, it's, it's a completely different playing field. But yeah, um, it probably didn't make a lot of sense. The old school cam girls didn't get naked, and they rarely even had cams. We are now 22 years into the World Wide Web, that's like from Elvis to the Sex Pistols or Chuck Berry to Hotel California. The secret diary part of the internet today, the equivalent to Zines or underground radio, is lost to a sexualized commercial framework. And life online has real impact on real people.